Good afternoon and welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show. This is a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So we're back for the beginning of the week for the episode this week, which I do every week on uh, the Sunday that just basically talks about what's going to be happening on the channel for this week, um, what albums we're going to be doing, what content is going on, uh, what, if anything, uh, is going on with my series or upcoming series or upcoming shows that are going to be going on. Pretty much just detailing it for those of people who like this kind of thing. I tend to be more organized in my thinking than the average person just wants to see a video. I like to kind of organize it so that there are people out there who are like me who like that kind of thing. And so I'm trying to give them this so this show is now like episode 37 already, so wow. <laughs> it's been a while, I've been doing this for 37 weeks. It kind of surprises me actually. So we're gonna start with um, Ben's album challenge, which is the first show of the week, uh, which comes Monday, or usually Sunday nights at eight. On occasion it's been late because of uh, time constraints, but I try to stick to the schedule where I can. Okay, so this week he gave me an album. Um, we actually had discussed a different album, but he said, no, let's go with this album. So I think he's got the right idea. So we're, um, I think I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but I'm going to try my best. It's called Diving Divingus, and the album is What a Life, and that will be the album for this week um, on Ben's Album Challenge. So for the Monday night look back at a classic rock album, which is a show that I do every Monday night in which I talk about an album that I consider a classic. It's, it's greater than 15 years of age and has had some impact on my life in some way or another, or generally speaking is a, considered one of the great albums by that group. All kinds of different reasons, but those are the main reasons. So I chose to do this album which is currently on my uh, playlist. This album, Benefit by Jethro Tull. This is their third album. The one that comes between Stand Up and Aqualung, two very well-known albums. So I don't think it gets as much attention as those two, but it's a really good album. Um, I, it's, it's been one of the harder ones for me to penetrate. I'm not really sure why. Um, but it's taking a long time to penetrate like it's been on my uh playlist now for over five months and i'm still still not 100 percent warmed into it so but i feel i've warmed up enough to it to do a classic rock album uh, review for it so this will be on um my monday night look back at a classic rock album this week jethro tull's benefit their third album okay so moving on um, on my Wednesday night show, which is a show in which I do, I sometimes do top 10 favorites or I do top 25 favorites or I may do a album ranking or I might do, um, you know, my top 10 guitar players or top 10 bass players or something of that nature. It's always a list though, that's that's the point. Some people really like lists a lot. I tend to like to do them too. It, it kind of, I find the thing with lists that really I enjoy the most is that you really start to think of the whole bands or the whole genre or whatever you're doing. You start thinking about it in terms of which ones do you like best. And then it really reminds you, and, and for me, this is very much the case, Reminds me of some stuff that oh boy. I haven't listened to that for a while. That's definitely one of my favorites You know or this it, it brings back stuff that I haven't listened to for a while and that's one of the characteristics about it I like it's not necessarily true that You know on any given day that this is the definitive List for this group, you know, there can be no other list. This is the way they are and nobody else can challenge it. That, that's not the case. It's just my own personal feelings about it, based and you know, based in largely on how I feel about the album, on when I get it or when I listen to it or how it's impacted my life. All these different things. Obviously, 
um, an album that impacts me in some way because of some circumstance in my life can't be duplicated by other people. Like you can't have that same experience if it's my life. So these are just my definitive, um, you know, favorites for whatever particular thing I'm doing. And and sometimes I know people get like, why why would you put that album on there? Well, because it had this impact on me. Well, it never had that impact on me. Well because you're not me you couldn't have the same impact right so and and that's the great beauty about this favorites thing is that everybody has different different things that they like more for whatever reason and you get to you get to hear people's opinion like i really like that album a lot because of this impact on me and then you start to see how these albums have impacts on people's lives it's not they're not just some kind of um album that everybody oh yeah yeah that album was on the radio it's great you know whatever but it, it's how it impacts you on your life and so uh, for me that's what's the big thing about my um, my show the favorites which i like doing you know um so this week now that i've explained all that <laughs> to great degree here this week's episode will be i'm going to tackle something that i've been kind of putting off because um I haven't been into this as much as I used to be into this. When I was younger, I listened to a lot of heavy metal all the time. And I haven't been as into it. I don't know if it's because I'm older and my bones are brittler or whatever it is. I don't listen to as much metal as I used to. Lately, I've been listening to a little more. So I decided that, you know what, there's enough really solid metal bands out there that I've enjoyed more recently. Um, I mean, I have my classic heavy metal bands that I enjoy a lot, um, and they're probably going to finish near the top of the list, but I'm going to do a top 25 favorite metal bands. And and the other thing about metal bands is that there's there's a kind of... Uh, it's, it's not a rock-solid kind of genre like where... You know, these are the definitive uh, heavy metal sounds and there's no other sounds. You know, there's a fine line in some cases between heavy metal and hard rock. And, and in, in fact, in my experience, there are some hard rock bands that are actually heavier than the heavy metal bands. It's a sound. There's a kind of a sound to it that makes it a heavy metal album or makes it a hard rock album. So anyways, we're going to be doing my top 25 heavy metals. I've done my top 25 hard rocks. I've done my top 25 progressive rocks. I figured it was time to give those heavy metal bands some overdue time. And there's enough of them, I believe, that I can get a good 25 list. Not a lot of these bands do I listen to all the time or have had a great deal of depth with them, but I do like them. Um, for me, metal makes up maybe about 10% of my listening over the course of a week i may it's in, in that essence it may be one or two albums that i listen to and then i get into these moods where i, I just want to listen to metal or i just want to listen to hard rock or i just want to listen to progressive rock that happens to everybody i think but for me lately i've been listening to a little more heavy metal so i think it's a good timing to do a top 25 list i'm still not quite ready for my australian list but i am ready for this heavy metal one so we will do that this week Okay, now, the other show that I'm going to do this week is uh, What's New. We're going to do a album, and I'm going to have to look at this because it's kind of relative. Of course, it's new to me, but it's the Brian Jones Massacre, and uh, the album is called Fortune is Your Past, or The Future is Your Past. Sorry, not your fortune. Future is Your Past. And I'm assuming this is a punk rock band. Uh, because I made notes about a month ago about all the albums I wanted to do up until a certain point, and this was one of them. I didn't check it before I did this. Probably should have to make sure that it's a punk band, but I'm reasonably sure it is. So um, I do like some punk rock some of the time. I'm not overly punk rock driven, probably less than I am heavy metal driven, but I still do like it on occasion. So that will be an album I'm going to fit in somewhere. I know... Um, I fit in the Uriah Heap album fairly late last week because uh, because of time constraints, but uh, I definitely want to try and fit this in earlier in the week if I can. K 
Okay, so then we're on to our series. So we have, for those of you who have been keeping track, we are into the third round, or if you want the, um, I guess this is the quarterfinals, right? Yeah, so quarterfinals, there's four bands, uh, eight bands left, four battles. The first one went uh, yesterday uh, between um, Rose Tattoo and Mountains Climbing Album. Today's, if you've been watching, it would have came out this morning, which was the Iggy Pop, uh, Frank Marino and Mahogany Rush Combat. Um, so if you want to check that out, you can for this morning. And then, of course, we have uh, coming out tomorrow, we'll have the Winter Hawk and Frigid Paint, which I think is going to be a very tough battle. I am kind of not sure how this is going to go at all. And then you have the last battle for that round will be between Golden Earring and Master's Apprentice. This should be a difficult one as well. I think that that one between Winterhawk and Frigid Pink is going to be the toughest. And then we'll go on to the four surviving bands. We'll go on to the semis. And we should have the finals by, I believe, Saturday's the scheduled time for the finals. And they'll be, I think it's for a Saturday. Yeah, I, I believe it's it'll be Saturdays, the finals. Uh, and whatever two bands are left, that's what's going to happen. And then uh, we'll start the new series on the... Well, actually, that would be on the Friday. Yeah, that makes sense. That's That, that makes definite sense. So Friday we will have the, um, the finals. And then the Saturday morning, which is the 1st of April, we will start the new series. And for those of you who aren't sure what this new series is. I've mentioned it a couple times coming up, but I'll re-mention it now. We're going to be doing our top, and I think the title of this, get my binoculars on here, um, will be Great Tandems in Rock History. So what I'm doing is a, a, a great tandem for me, in this case, will feature the front man lead vocalist and the front lead guitarist. You know, so those two tandems, that's what I'm going to do. I can think of a dozen offhand, but um, I'm going to try and put my, because it's April, it'll be 30 days, so it'll be my 30 favorite, uh, or yeah, probably my 30 favorite um, tandems. So my 30 favorite rock vocalist guitar tandems that, uh, or lead guitar tandems that have come out in the history of rock music and uh, there's a ton of them there are a ton of them so I'm not sure how I'm going to go about it whether I'm just going to do them randomly or I'm going to put them in some kind of an order of my favorite to my least favorite you know, I may do that just to make it interesting but it's very difficult you know some of these guys are so close like you, you just basically I'll put him put him put him put him put him and but really they're all the same but anyways, we're gonna do that. Just it's basically just to talk about these great musicians that have had such an impact, and there's lots of them, lots of them. Some of them, there's a few of them that have been actually in two tandems. Like there might be a great vocalist who's actually been in with two great guitarists in two separate places at two separate times, and I may give him both. Um, both it depends. You know, it depends on how strong they are and there may be a few where the, it's the guitar player who's played with two fantastic vocalists at separate times in different bands you know i'm not sure how that's going to all play out i have to finish the list first which i'm hopefully to do during the week and get it ready for the beginning of that um, series and then going forward after that for the months of may june july and probably august there'll be no series at this time, I'm not planning any series. I'm planning on doing some rock legend stuff. Uh, there's some new stuff I want to try out. And basically, also in the summer months, I'm a lot busier at work. And um, baseball is a big thing for me as well. So, um, yeah, so you can only do so many things in a day. And uh, I'd rather do them well than try to cram too much in there. And then you have a bunch of not so good videos just not not really into doing that so so that's it for the upcoming um, recent stuff and of course uh, for those of you who have been following you know that I'm planning to do a psychedelic show 
and I believe that this psychedelic show will be um, uh, on the weekend sometime. I'm thinking it'll be it'll be released for Saturday night. I've never done anything on a Saturday night because I have a commitment on Saturday night. So if if I do do it, it'll be a pre-recorded video that will come out on the Saturday night. So then I'd have a show Saturday night, Sunday night, and Monday night. The other thing is Ben's Albums Challenge. Um, we're going to do up to 30 episodes. I think we're around 22 or so now. So when we get to that 30 range, we're going to uh, do a ranking of those. Or I don't know if it'll be a ranking of them all, but it's probably going to be... Uh, maybe the top 10 or a top 20 favorite episodes for that series. Um, rank them according to how I feel about them and how I think they did and that kind of thing, just to talk a little bit more about those albums. And then we may go bi-weekly for a bit for the course of the summer, just have one every once in a while, every uh, couple weeks until <coughs> time permits for more. So that's what's happening with Ben's Album Challenge. And as far as the live video, or the, not live video, but the show that we used to do called Saturday, uh, Friday Night Live Experience, we're going to do something of that nature. I don't believe it'll be on the Friday night. It'll probably be, I think I'm going to move it to the Thursday night. So then we'd have a show Sunday night, Monday night, Friday. Uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Saturday night, and there would be nothing on the Tuesday or s Tuesday or Friday, because Friday I'm committed to something else. So, anyways, um, that's what's happening. You know, um, all pretty interesting stuff. Um, once I get back into the series, which I think will probably commence in September, we'll probably do another battle of some sort. Um, Ben's uh, wanting to do a battle of um, covers, uh, cover band, bands that do covers or, or albums that are covers or something like that. I'm not as keen on that. I'm not really a big fan of cover bands or, or of covered albums or of covered songs. I, I never really got into that. There's a couple no, notable exceptions, but for the most part, I'm not really into that so I don't know if we'll do that or we may do something else I'm not sure but there will be some series that will come out probably in September or possibly as uh, late as October but once we get into the winter months I have more time and so I will try to do uh, do them then so as far as I know that is the only new things going on and of course uh, for those of you who are waiting I'm uh, going to be doing the ACDC thing in probably in May It'll be, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be at least four episodes. It'll be A, B, C, D episodes uh, featuring ACDC as on Rock Legends. We'll be talking about their formation years and then their, their um, international, beginning of their international years, then their then 80s when they were huge with a different singer, Brian Johnson, and then the final one will be on what's going on with them since the 90s on those are probably going to be the four episodes that i'm going to do and that's been i've had a few people talk to me about doing kiss as well because they're having their 50th anniversary i'm a little resistant to this one for for different reasons that this was a no-brainer 10 years ago they would have definitely been done there would have been no corners but i'm just gotten to a point where I'm tired of listening to all the bickering between the members and you know a lot of people have come out of the woodwork who do not like them at all so there's they're a very controversial band there's people that absolutely love everything they do and then there's people that cannot stand anything they do and uh, at one time I was they love everything they do and I'm, I'm not in the camp of I can't stand anything they do I'm in the camp of uh I don't really want to listen to them anymore. I, I'm, I'm not against them or for them at all. I just, just assume not have too much to do with them if I can avoid it. So I'm not sure if I'm going to put forth all this energy on a band that I don't really feel that way about. So, so but we will see. We will see what happens. Um, probably have to do one for Rush uh, next year because it'll be their 50th anniversary. That one will be absolutely no-brainer for me. 
that will be coming um, probably next year. Um, there's a few other bands that came out in and around that era, but that will be the main one. Being my favorite band, I would be, you know, I would be insane not to do them. I'm, I'm, and plus, I know much more about them than I do about just about any other band. To me, they're my countrymen and almost like my family. Um, that, that's the way I feel about them. You know, I've never met any of them. They don't even know I exist, but at the same time, I've loved and they've had a huge impact on my life. There's no two ways about it. And the, the reason I'm actually doing this show is because of the, the impact, direct impact from them on me. So anyways, that's enough. I think we said enough. Uh, I think people pretty much know where we're going in the future with uh, stuff. So after this uh, month, we'll have one more series and then we're going to take some breaks from series for a bit so that I can do some Rock Legend stuff and do some other shows and see if these other shows can become regular shows. Uh, the psychedelic one uh, is the one, the main one I'm most interested in doing and then the live one after that because I think um, it was fairly enjoyable to do Friday Night Live Experience. It just it interfered too much with something else I'm doing so uh, I had to cancel it for the time being and uh, hopefully we'll get back at it. So anyways, I hope you like this episode. Please like and subscribe. It's much appreciated. And we'll be back next Sunday with another This Week episode on what's going on on the channel. So take care. Bye.